ebeleza Africa epuesia Siamo Giovanni Africani Kete kano Il voto di Gesunela Nostra vita quotidiana Greetings from Africa Siamo quindi Molto Yurufochi Per questa opportunità Di conversazione digitale Sinodale Con il Santo Padre Un popolo unito in Cristo Le sfide delle conoce Individuano Cristo Collusione Nonostante Greetings from Africa Grazie Santo Padre Per aver suscitato Le nostre speranze E darci una voce Questo è il motivo Per cui cantiamo Grazie nelle nostre diverse lingue tribali. Grazie, Santo Padre. Youth are the majority of the African population. So, sincerely for me, it's an honor to enter into dialogue with you, students of the African universities. I recall that once Kofi Annan, an ex-Secretary General for the United Nations, once wrote that if a society cuts off its youth, its young generation, from society, it is condemned to bleed to death. And I can apply this to the church. <clears throat> if the church cuts off the young generation from its life, it is condemned to bleed death. So it is important that we help one another to journey together. One of the ways how young people can really engage uh, with society is the intergenerational dialogue. They say that youth have the power to open the doors for the future, but adults have the key for the future. So it is very important that we enter into this intergenerational uh, dialogue. For if a society even in a society, there is a rupture between the young generation and adults. 
it means that society has no roots. And allow me to say this, if young people do not have this engagement, this dialogue with adults, with the elderly, that means that young generation has no roots, is unrooted. So it is more than a pleasure for me when I learn that you are going to get engaged in a dialogue with a man of 86 years, Pope Francis. Pope Francis is a very interesting person, even for me personally. He has a lot to share with us. Above all, his spiritual experience, his intimacy with Jesus, Jesus who is the fullness of life, joy, and meaning. So I encourage you to not only enjoy your dialogue with a man of 86 years, Pope Francis, but also to get inspired in order to engage more with your elderly, to share with them the wisdom of life. My brothers and sisters, presently we are celebrating a synod for the whole church. And the theme is for a synodal church. And a synodal church is a church where we all walk together, we journey together, young and adult. May this synodal experience of the Catholic Church also help you to enhance this dialogue between generations. Saint-Père, je suis Marie-Sophie de l'Université catholique du Congo Kinshasa. Au nom des étudiants catholiques du continent, I'm from the Catholic University of Congo Kinshasa in the name of the young students, I am glad to greet you amongst us. The joy that you place in our hearts and that the gospel brings to life when two or three have met in my name, I am amongst them. We believe that the Lord lives in this blessed moment and in this virtual space with the Holy Father in union with our bishops and our chaplain brothers and sisters. Holy Father, we, the young people of Africa, men and women, you are our father to us. You accompany us in our daily life with the warmth of your smile and with your encouraging words. And with the same warmth and love, we greet you so that we may feed on your presence and advice. Welcome, Holy Father. Your Holiness, Dear friends and fellow university students from Africa, it is with great humility that I stand before you all here today representing DePaul University, Chicago. My name is Kevin Holetchko and I'm the president of DePaul's Student Government Association. DePaul is a Catholic Vincentian University located in the city of Chicago, Illinois in the United States. For more than 125 years, DePaul has been a force for progressive and positive change across the world. Our Vincentian mission calls on us to seek out the injustices of the world and help the marginalized. It is one of the greatest honors that DePaul now shares this space with His Holiness and our fellow institutions across Africa and the world. Before we begin the discussion, let me share with you one of my favorite quotes from St. Vincent de Paul that reflects what we do at our university. There is no act of charity that is not accompanied by justice, 
or that permits us to do more than we reasonably can. And now to lead us in prayer and conversation, His Holiness, Pope Francis. Good morning to all African students. I wish to welcome you all. Mary Sophie, Kevin, thank you very much for your very warm welcome. These are words that uh, invite us to reach out to one another, to encounter. This meeting is to build bridges, bridges that can lead us to become closer, which can unite us, that can allow us to listen to one another. Listening is difficult. Speaking isn't difficult either, but uh, listening is certainly difficult. We'll be talking to young people today, and uh, young people aren't anything new. Just be careful when they tell you that you're something new. What you are is a step forward. You are the tree, you are the fruits, you are the roots. Therefore, the stronger you are, the stronger your roots are. But we don't want your roots to be individual. We want you to be united so that your roots can turn into a tree, which in turn can lead to fruits. And of course, all of you have a story, a history. All of your peoples have a history. We have to be able to respect history and bring it forward. History isn't always a, a pleasant story. History can be very harsh. There are peoples who have built their history on blood. And many of you belong to those peoples. Therefore, I urge you to uh, take the history of your peoples upon yourself. Prove your maturity. All of us were born as something small, as a mushroom almost. But then, of course, we can only become mature if we accept the burden of history. Good part and the bad part of history, the joyful part of history and the tough part of history. And you're all too familiar with the tough part of your history. You're familiar with exploitation and slavery. You know what it means to exploit Africa without allowing it to grow. And therefore, you are a part of this very harsh and important history that we have to learn to accept. And therefore, allow me to express my appreciation for your culture and your history. And uh, perhaps the term uh, that uh, I could use to understand one another is the term Ubuntu, which belongs to your culture. An encounter between all of us that can lead us forward. The richness of your Ubuntu as a form of salvation through community. When I was a child, I remember uh, hearing about missionaries who traveled to Africa. Africa always received from the outside, the missionaries and the exploiters too. Africa was exploited and uh, sometimes when independence was granted, independence was only granted from the soil up, whereas everything under the soil continued to belong to the exploiters. And therefore, let me just say uh, through the term Ubuntu, that you Africans are your own masters. You are your own missionaries. Run forward. Africa isn't meant to be exploited. Africa isn't meant to be seen as a subculture. It has its own wealth, not just its natural resources. It's many natural resources, not just as many beauties. 
It has its human beings and you young Africans have to appreciate the wealth that you are. Gracias, Santo Padre, por su sí constante y su presencia hoy con nosotros. Soy Aleja Sastoque, hablé con usted en el Holy Father for en la iniciativa de los puentes hacia los maestros. Uh, soy meeting, colombiana y tuve la suerte de estudiar en los Estados Unidos. And I was lucky enough to get a scholarship for the United States, where I finished studying, and I am working at the pastoral in the University of DePaul in Chicago. I, I was greatly inspired by my experience, and I am working on this project in order to hear the voices of migrants, and I appreciate uh, this initiative of building bridges. I welcome all our new friends along this path of building bridges, the students of all of Africa. I am praying that all of them and all of them that are by them represented may draw inspiration from this encounter and I hope to be able to keep welcoming students from all over the world in our future meetings. My name is Peter Jones. I'm a professor and serve as the Dean of the Institute of Pastoral Studies at Loyola University Chicago. I helped to organize the first encounter of the Building Bridges initiative when you first met Aleha along with other students. That initiative is university-led and student-centered, prioritizing connections across boundaries of all types and encouraging the habits of synodality in all areas of life. Students from across the Americas continue to work on the projects they presented to you, Holy Father. Your example of openness to encounter, deep listening and authentic dialogue are extraordinary and we hope that it will become ordinary. I had the pleasure of being present at the Pan-African Catholic Congress in Nairobi, Kenya, a few months ago. I met many wonderful and hardworking people, people who are dedicated to educating and forming students as faithful and constructive leaders. It is our honor, Aleha and I, to hand on the inspiration for this encounter to our new friends in Africa. The Pan-African Catholic Theology and Pastoral Network has made possible this second encounter today. And I'm delighted to introduce one of the leaders of that network and the key coordinator for today's event, Father Stan Chu Elo. Thank you very much, Peter, for your kind words and your dedication and commitment to the Building Bridges Initiatives. Holy Father, one of the ancient designations of the papacy is a bridge builder. Thank you for teaching us how to build these bridges by your own exemplary life and teaching. You have invited us today to embrace a culture of encounter and to journey together as God's people to that future that God alone knows. When you speak about the culture of encounter, you speak like an African elder because the culture of encounter is the summary of the African Ubuntu, a shared ethical and spiritual wisdom in Africa that says that we are all together, we all belong, we all are connected, and we are held together by a bond of love in a shared universe. When we all come together and share in each other's joys and sorrows, we are living the Ubuntu spirit. That is also the central message of the gospel of love. Ubuntu affirms that the condition for human and cosmic flourishing can only be achieved when we all make a space for everyone, especially the poor and those at the existential peripheries. Holy Father, we are glad that you have made our time for African young people today. Thank you for your love for Africa and her peoples and cultures. Africa loves you, and we pray for you. Holy Father, permit me to present to you and acknowledge the receipt of the greetings from the following dicasteries who have worked together for this important event. 
first from Professor Emil Secuda, the Secretary of the Pontifical Latin American Commission, and who has worked so hard for the success of this encounter. Second is from Cardinal Antonio Gokim Tagle, Prefect of the Dicastery for the Evangelization of Peoples that serves in a special way the mission of the church in Africa. Third is the message from Cardinal Mario Gretsch that we just listened to, the Secretary General of the Synod of Bishops. Fourth is Cardinal Jose Tolentino Galaza de Mendoza, the Prefect of the Congregation for Culture and Catholic Education. Fifth is from Monsignor Lucio Ruiz, Secretary of the Dicastery for Communication, who is promoting the digital synodal conversation of Catholic young people throughout the world. And finally, from Africa, our greetings from Cardinal Fridolin Ambogno. On behalf of all African bishops, he brings a message of solidarity and support under the aegis of the Symposium of the Episcopal Conferences of Africa and Madagascar II. And finally, from Cardinal Peter Obaleke, the newest Cardinal from Africa. Holy Father, the encounter today will focus on three broad themes. First is on faith and spirituality around the message of missionary conversion of Evangelii Gaudium and your post synodal apostolic exhortation address to young people, Christus Vivid. Second, on Ubuntu and ecology around the message of Laudato Si. And finally, human solidarity, social friendship, youth leadership, and social justice around the message of Fratelli Tutti. Holy Father, may I now introduce to you my brother and a Jesuit like you. He actually made his final vows yesterday. Father Emmanuel Bueya, the director of the Building Bridges Initiative under the research unit of the Church of Now of the Pan-African Catholic Theology and Pastoral Network. Father Emmanuel will moderate the first part of this encounter between you, Holy Father, and these young African Catholic students. Father Emmanuel. Thank you very much, Father Stan. Saint Père, Veuillez me permettre avant tout de vous présenter les corps. Holy Father, allow me to introduce to you the students that have been invited to this synodal conversation. We have chosen 34 universities in nine African countries, and we have created in all those universities 32 groups with. Uh, 15 to 20 students. They have met on several occasions in different meetings to have nine amongst them to represent them in this conversation. And after this dialogue with you, the synodal conversations shall continue in the Catholic universities of the other African countries. Holy Father, I introduce you the students that have been uh, chosen with the first question. Twiza Nachilongo from Zambia, Nabira from the Republic Democratic of Congo, Pedi San Teresa from Uganda, and Cabo Gila from Cote d'Ivoire, and Joel Marseille from Congo Brazzaville. I invite Twiza Nachilongo from Zambia to take the floor now. Holy Father, my name is Lisa. I have just been 19. Of us lost a number of families and friends. Global health inequality still continues to lead to deaths among the young African youths, especially because of diseases like malaria, Ebola, and HIV and AIDS. There are so many faith healing groups, like the Finger of Thomas Ministry. We also have 
of the Advent. We wish to follow Jesus like his disciples. And Holy Father, you have called us to a synod. With the church, and we as a youth have answered to this call. How can we participate fully in this synodal process? How can we grow, especially because healing ministries? And we are unable to discern between these between these. I repeat the question, Holy Father, we are still living through the ravage of COVID-19. Many of us lost families, members, and friends. Many of us faced health challenges. Global health inequality continues to lead to many deaths among young people in Africa because disease like Ebola, AIDS, malaria, there are so many faith healing groups in our country, like the Finger of Thomas Ministry. We also have a huge growth in charismatic Catholics and Pentecostals, who wish to follow Jesus as his disciples. Like the disciples, we want to see Jesus. Holy Father, you have called us to a synodal journey with the church, and we have answered the call. How can we participate fully in this synodal process? How can we grow in spirituality, especially because there are so many healing ministries, prosperity gospel message, spiritual movements in Africa, and we don't know how to discern among those groups. Gracias. Thank you, Tuisa Nachilongo, for your question and for your remarks. Uh, during your remarks, you mentioned uh, something which uh, brought to mind a so-called supermarket of salvation. You mentioned the ministries of salvation or offers of spirituality and when facing this real supermarket of offers we sometimes don't know which path to choose but we do have a clear criterion that we can look to we'll find the path in our heart the heart is what makes us feel uh, something directly without intermediaries you can feel in your heart that you are looking for God, that you are looking for others. Go forward, and then along your path, you'll notice if you are becoming more mature. Don't look to all of the various 
religious offers. Don't listen to those who say, I belong to such and such religious group. You belong to your motherland. You belong to God. And regardless of the religious group you belong to, keep in mind that the most important thing for a religious group is to make sure that it doesn't take your freedom away from you. When it does, it isn't healthy. And then in all of this, you mentioned that you can achieve spirituality also through discernment. You can understand which spiritual group is allowing you to grow. And that will lead you uh, to uh, the answers you are seeking for. That's what came to mind as I was listening to your remarks. Thank you. À présent, j'invite Clevin Kavira de la République démocratique du Congo à prendre. I now invite Clevin Kavira from the Re Democratic Republic of Congo to take the floor. I am Clevin Kavira from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Last July, the whole Congolese nation and we, the Congolese Catholic youth in particular, were looking forward to your visit impatiently. Unfortunately, your health situation did not allow you to travel to my country. Many people believed that the war of the rebel groups that is ravaging the east of the country made you so afraid that you had to cancel your visit to Congo and South Sudan. Holy Father, there is a lot of love and hope in our hearts and space in our homes to welcome you. Are you still planning to come and comfort us? When will you come to meet all those women and mothers who have suffered rape to express God's compassion to them? You ended your question by mentioning uh, the women who were raped who were abused. Women are, are often the protagonists of pain in Africa. They are often underestimated. They are subject to violence. Rebel to that. Rebel so they can truly achieve the freedom of women and the dignity of women. Women aren't made to be used. Women are those who give life to a people. They are the mother of a people. And uh, they are capable of working together. I urge you to do that. Regarding uh, my uh, trip, my visit, I had to suspend it because my doctor ordered me to. I'm uh, back to walking now with a, uh, with a cane and therefore things are improving. And hopefully, if all goes well, in early February, uh, I will come to visit you. I'll visit you and South Sudan. This trip was planned for February. Uh, I was thinking of late January, but uh, the climate isn't uh, the very best in January. Therefore, we're moving the trip to February. We're working on the trip, and I'll uh, surely be able to meet you. And I'd like to mention one of the things that you yourself were mentioning, which uh, truly moved me. And I'm referring to God's compassion. Compassion doesn't mean uh, one's pity. It doesn't mean uh, offering uh, a caress. Compassion means suffering with you. It means sharing uh, your pain. It means sharing uh, all of the things I mentioned earlier regarding women. Thank you very much for your kind words. And I believe that we all have to express God's compassion. All of us Christians have to express 
God's compassion uh, through the things we do. And I'll play my part and hopefully you will play yours so that we can move together uh, towards the future. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Saint-Père. Nous vous attendons avec grande joie au Congo et au Sud. Thank you, Holy pa Father. We expect you with great joy. Now, let me introduce Davis and Pereza from Uganda to take the floor. Holy Father, I am Davis and Pereza, a Catholic student from Uganda that hosts many migrants from Democratic Republic of Congo, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Burundi. This year, my country hosted over 1.5 million refugees. In addition to the influx of so many refugees to Uganda, we must add, Holy Father, the challenges of economic migration. Many young African men and women leave their homes to escape violence, poverty, and the stress caused by drought, floods, cyclone, and environmental disasters. To practice charity towards them is commendable, but stopping the sale of arms, the looting of our resources, will put an end to this forced displacement and this involuntary search of asylum in Europe and North America by African young people. Holy Father, Ubuntu for us Africans represents inclusiveness, a bond of love, friendship, an openness to welcome others and to encounter them as friends in a familiar spirit of dialogue. With the young people embrace your message in Fratelli Tutti and wish to work together to make our continent a home of social friendship. How can you help us young people in Africa to realize our dream of ending war, poverty, hunger, semi-permanence of refugees and the displacement of so many young people in our African motherland. Thank you very much for your question. And uh, your final question was, how can you help us to realize our dream of ending war, hunger, poverty, semi-permanence of refugees and displacement of so many young people in the African motherland. You mentioned some of Africa's key problems, the looting of resources, which end up slowly making your countries poorer, it slowly makes African peoples poorer. And this leads to displacement and the migration of young people to other countries. And often they travel towards Europe uh, looking for jobs that they can't find in their countries. They end up asking for asylum in Europe, in North America. And you also mentioned the sale of arms, which currently is humanity's biggest scourge. If we were to stop selling arms for one year, we would erase hunger globally. Although nowadays everything uh, is focused on the sale of arms. And often wars are waged to use older weapons and to test newer ones. We see this everywhere. Here in Europe, we're concerned with uh, the war because it uh, touches us closely, but wars have never stopped around the world. Think of Syria. 
Think of Myanmar or many other places in Africa. War continues constantly because it's almost like a need we have. And sometimes uh, wars are waged due to specific interests. The problem of the sale of arms is something which uh, keeps us in slavery. You also mentioned economic migration, which uh, is often linked to hunger. Many travel from Africa to Europe, Greece, France, Spain, Cyprus, Italy, and many unfortunately die in the Mediterranean, which has become Europe's largest graveyard. The tragedy of African migration, uh, which force people to leave their countries due to poverty. You also have a, a very savage history of colonialism. The colonialists who exploited you to further their development. And I mentioned this earlier. Sometimes uh, in, we think of Africa as a continent to be exploited. And uh, throughout history, we've seen that independence is granted to countries, but countries continue to depend on their colonizers. And the colonizers continue to exploit the resources underground. So it was a, a partial independence, which isn't really independence at all, because independence is either full independence or it isn't. And therefore, you have to work to achieve true independence through your youth, through your strength. Think of Uganda. Uganda was very generous in uh, hosting so many refugees. Refugees flee from their countries because of the many problems they face. They seek shelter elsewhere. And I remember that when I was in Uganda, I was impressed by the spirituality of your people. In the Sanctuary of the Martyrs, I really felt the greatness of the people of Uganda. Now, I urge you to continue in your struggle. I urge you to continue to strive towards a dream of putting an end to war, hunger, and poverty, and the semi-permanence of refugees. Continue to be strong, continue to struggle uh, with uh, all of your youth, with the feelings you have, and with uh, all of your strength and unity. Please continue to struggle. À présent, j'invite Aka Pogislan de la Côte d'Ivoire à prendre la parole. Now I invite Aka Pogislan from Côte d'Ivoire to take the floor. Holy Father, I am Aka Pogislan in Côte d'Ivoire. This country has the highest level of biodiversity in West Africa, with 1,200 animal species and 1,700 plant species. However, like all of West Africa, this country is suffering from severe deforestation. The drought in the Sahel causes immigration, which leads to insecurity. Moreover, the countries and companies of the North have become rich by exploiting the natural resources of the South, creating an ecological debt. Holy Father, we're not concerned with whom will pay this debt and how. We are more concerned about our future on the continent in the face of these multinationals, corporations that take everything from us. Building bridges between the North and the South invites us to stop these trade imbalances and this unlimited consumption of natural resources. We young people would like to plant trees in our villages, but the ecological challenges we are facing are greater than the efforts we can carry out. How can we live on our common earth without ecological justice and without effective degrowth? Africa. 
creo que es verdad. El, vos hablas de la riqueza. Has the best chocolate in Africa. That's the truth. Now you mentioned the wealth of your country. You mentioned biodiversity. You mentioned the many species you have. And you also mentioned the tragedy, which is deforestation. And the same thing is happening in the Amazon forest in Latin America. Deforestation is brought about by our focus on business. And we tend to lose the bond between nature and human beings, something which uh, in Brazil is referred to as the well-being, the harmony which exists between nature and the human person. Deforestation is a crime against humanity because it leads to uh, global warming and it leads to the deterioration uh, of uh, our atmosphere's conditions. This is something that uh, many countries still uh, aren't aware of. And we aren't fully aware of the environmental debt that we are leaving to the future generations. Who is going to pay that debt? And I know that unless we act now, it'll be too late. Um, recently, I attended a meeting with scientists during which we were discussing environmental issues. And a top European scientist said, I'm sad, I'm concerned. by thinking of the world my grandchildren will be uh, living in in 30 years time. It'll be an unhealthy world in which uh, the coral reefs will disappear. We have the responsibility of uh, caring for the environment. And then of course, we also have to consider the multinational corporations which exploit uh, nature and which lead to greater imbalances. Um, a very Spanish word comes to mind at this point and hopefully can be translated. When uh, you were speaking, I felt your love for your land, for your soil, a love for uh, a land, an earth which is being assassinated, it's being violated. And we have to truly think about how savage it is to rape the earth, just as it is to rape a woman. We are raping the earth because we want to dominate it, because we want wealth. And that's a very harsh thing to think about. And therefore, I urge you to uh, be committed in battling those who want to rape the earth. Please consider that uh, any act which leads to an unbalance uh, in the earth is something that can uh, be countered if we act as the apostles of the earth. And please continue to struggle and please continue making that wonderful chocolate your country is famous for. May God bless you. Holy Father, our country, the Republic of Congo Brazzaville, is considered the world's second largest lung because of its biodiversity and its place in the Congo Basin. It is the third largest oil producer in sub-Saharan Africa, but half the population lives below the poverty line. Elsewhere, these natural resources contribute to the well-being of their owners. But in our country, Congo, they are considered 
cursed resources. Instead, they cause poverty, environmental degradation, pollution, unemployment, and even death. Holy Father, we young people are mostly without opportunities, without professional training, without equipment. We have no desire to emigrate to the north where our resources go. Instead, we ask you to invite the youth of the north to join us in promoting more social justice, transparency, and accountability in the management of these natural resources. Building bridges between the north and the south or across continents also means sharing these resources equitably. And the church, concerned with the well-being of all, can contribute to this mission of young people for international equity. More concretely, how can the church guide us, the youth, to find a well-paid job so that we can live a fruitful and abundant life thanks to the rich resources of Africa and to the talents and ingenuity of us, the young Africans. Thank you. And uh, I was uh, struck by the things you said first. You mentioned the world without four times. You said that young people are without opportunities, without professional training, without equipment, and without possibilities. Where do our resources end up? That's a good question, I think. There is an imbalance between production and uh, the fruits of that production. I think building bridges is the real challenge, bridges between the North and the South. We can build bridges on the continent too, because bridges can lead us forward and young people have to look forward towards international fairness that can help us move forward. I think that uh, you shouldn't limit yourselves to being concerned. You have to act. Of course, you will upset people initially, but don't give up. Organize yourselves, help one another organize. Because if you stay on your own, you'll end up being defeated. But if you organize, you can struggle together. Many of you will become martyrs, but you'll be able to succeed. Organization goes beyond time, and therefore I urge you to organize. Don't isolate yourselves because you'll lose. If you organize, you will suffer, you will be persecuted, but you will end up triumphing in the end. Keep going. And hopefully what you will achieve will be able to uh, be beneficial to Africa and to its young people. Help organize one another. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Saint-Père. Chers frères et sœurs, à présent, nous allons prendre une petite pause de cinq minutes. Et nous reviendrons pour la deuxième série de nos questions. We're nous... going to take a five-minute break and we will then continue with our conversation. Let us take a, a break and please be back in five minutes sharp. Thank you.
checando E o voto de quem sou leva Nossa vida cotidiana De conversazione digitale Sinodale, tanto santo padre Un popolo unito in Cristo Le sfide delle conoce Individuano Cristo Corrosione, nonostante Grazie Santo Padre, per aver suscitato le nostre speranze e darci una voce. Questo è il motivo per cui cantiamo grazie nelle nostre diverse lingue tribali. Grazie Santo Padre. Merci beaucoup pour cette interlude musicale et nous vous remercions également. Thank you for this musical interlude and thank you for your kind attention. I give the floor to Sister Leonida Katunge, a sister of the Congregation of Saint Joseph in Mombasa, Kenya, teacher of theology and national coordinator of the Building Bridges Initiative in Kenya. Dear sister, you have the floor. Holy Father, I'd like now to invite four students from Kenya, Nigeria, Cameroon, and Uganda respectively to ask their questions under the theme Ubuntu, education, youth inclusion, and professional insertion. Thank you. Eda Nabwire from Kenya. Holy Father, my name is Eda Nabwire from Kenya. In my country, politicians use young people to propagate violence and intimidate their opponents. The different social issues they are struggling with, ranging from poverty, hopelessness, suppression of youth movements demanding change in Africa by African governments, erosion of African cultural values, have all stemmed from the problem of bad governance in Africa. It is also characterized by minimal inclusion representation and participation of young people in governance, and thus little or no empowerment and contribution to the decision-making processes concerning their future. Holy Father, we the young people yearn to participate more actively in the way our countries are governed. We are doing this by coming out to vote as we did in the just concluded election. The issues stated above necessitate inclusion of the youths in interaction with the authorities of the states. This inclusion will allow youths to ask questions concerning the above issues and in, in return receive answers in various media. The state and even the church can even employ the use of the social media to collect and understand the views of the youths. As long as youths are listened to and adequate answers are provided to their questions, they become faith influencers who will spread the faith. 
How can you encourage us to keep working to be involved in our country's political life so that we permeate it with Christian values and social justice? Con eso hay un deseo que tienen los jóvenes de participar. Young people have the desire to participate. You mentioned a, a problem, the exclusion of young people. Whereas young people have to be included in a country's growth process and the growth of their motherland, an inclusion that will allow young people to be involved and to express their views on a number of issues. I think that the lack of the participation of young people is the death of a country. Young people have to be involved socially, politically, religiously, culturally, intellectually. You can't wait for tomorrow. Obviously, when we are young people, we tend to be, we tend to lack in caution, but sometimes we are far too cautious. And if we are too cautious, we won't ever end up doing anything. So be bold. And uh, I was wondering, could it not be that the social or economic conditions you were in, could it not be that the cultural environment that young people live in lead you to underestimate yourselves. Don't be afraid. Organize. Struggle. Don't let yourselves be turned into slaves. Think of how many social martyrs there are among young people. I'm thinking of uh, Latin America. I'm thinking of all the young people who gave their lives to struggle for their country socially and politically. And therefore, please continue working, striving for your future. Don't let yourselves be enslaved. Be cautious. Make sure you stay alive, but struggle. Because if the young people don't struggle, who will? And of course, the struggle can lead to martyr can lead to martyrdom, but of course God gives us the courage we need. Be cautious. Make sure that you receive the guidance from uh, older, wiser people. But please continue, continue forward, and be brave. And may God bless you. Osemeke Augustine Chidera from Nigeria. Holy Father, my name is Osemeke Augustine Chidera from Nigeria. You have inspired us through your writings in Christy Vivids, which captures and reflects the energy and liveliness of the youths and zeal to be heard. Holy Father, as you already know, Nigeria is plagued by fundamentalism and seemingly unending terrorist attacks. Our churches are being destroyed and many Christians have been killed in their churches. And many of our priests and sisters have lost their lives in these unending attacks. The rise of terrorism does not affect Nigeria alone, but also the region of the Sahel and Africa as a continent. Banditry and kidnapping have increased. These vices are now carried out by young men and women who have been manipulated and cajoled into embracing a life of terrorism and wickedness. Youths have been turned to puppets and stooges in carrying out violent acts around the continent. So, Holy Father, we would like to hear from you. What advice do you have for us and for our peers whose hopes are being dampened daily 
by these oppressive realities facing us in our country? How can we inspire new hopes in one another so as to begin the work of building the world of our dreams, the world of love, justice, and peace? Gracias. A mí me preocupa también Thank you. los problemas de fundamentalismo. Y I'm also concerned with the issue of uh, fundamentalism, terrorism, and banditry that you are facing in Nigeria. And uh, there are many men and women of the church who suffer. Many priests and sisters have been kidnapped or killed by banditry and terrorism. Of course, banditry and terrorism leads to social suicide. That has an effect on a country's ultimate survival. And uh, I think young people cannot be passive. You need to resist, you need to organize, you need to have religious doctrine. But Keep in mind that uh, you need to have religious doctrine. You need to be trained in real, tangible religious doctrine. And of course, politics is the highest form of charity because it is something which strives towards the common good. Young people, given their enthusiasm, given their capacity to suffer for their country, uh, can do something uh, in political terms. And as a way of making sure that uh, you don't make mistakes, train yourselves, prepare yourselves with a deep political understanding as to what your country is. Uh, individual peoples cannot imitate others. They have to find their own way. And therefore you need a political doctrine that stems from the people itself, which isn't imposed upon it without having anybody from the outside world come and tell you what to do, be it from the left or from the right. You have to find your own path, resistance, organization, and uh, political work. Of course, it isn't easy to counter banditry. And I know uh, how true what you are saying is. So you have to be cautious, you have to be active, but you also have to be firm in your hearts and be aware of the fact that you can't go it alone. You have to join forces and be organized. You have to be cautious and smart at the same time. You have to learn from your elders, from their wisdom, ask for their suggestions, for their guidance. And therefore, through resistance, organization, and political work with caution and wisdom, and keep in mind that God loves you and God will give you the strength to continue. Thank you. I now invite Bilegui Nelly Didine from Cameroon. Sempe, mon nom est Bilegui Nelly Didine, originaire du Cameroon. Holy Father, my name is Biligue Nelly Didian, a native of Cameroon. We, the youth of Cameroon, welcome with gratitude this initiative of a synodal conversation with the African youth. One of the barriers to the potential of the youth is the lack of professional insertion. Recruitment policies are discriminatory. The scarcity of opportunities, despite the academic training received, makes young people politically, socially, and psychologically vulnerable. Social injustices leave many without hope and in a situation of insecurity. Holy Father, these young people can benefit from the church's structures and from a professional framework that will allow them to overcome these barriers to, this to their development. 
The church can be at the forefront of the economic liberation of its people through empowerment projects. Catholic Christians have created organizations that are economically empowering and the church can help young people move into these established paths of economic growth. The church can provide concretely mentors, shared resources, ways to market their goods through faith-based economic fairs and more. Thank you. Thank you. One of the barriers that young people face is the lack of professional integration, as you were mentioning, which makes young people very vulnerable. So much so, in fact, that they feel helpless, hopeless. They are cornered by politicians. And uh, of course, they are forced to continue being young people indefinitely, which is a way of keeping uh, young people down, whereas young people have to be the future. The church needs to do more. It can do more in promoting uh, young people and human beings in schools and universities without cooperating with uh, the powers that repress. Universities have to be free and young people have to be able to grow in freedom. Young people have to have a mature mind, a mature heart, and they need to have the ability to do things, to act. Often in the past, Repressive governments have uh, closed down schools and universities, leaving young people without the possibility to learn. That, of course, is a way of subjugating the youth, keeping them in ignorance. That's why the church is so concerned in keeping universities and schools open uh, without focusing on a single sector of society. They have to be open uh, to all peoples. It wouldn't be the Christian way of teaching leadership were we to focus only on certain sectors of society. We want to make sure that uh, all of the population can grow together because we have to grow together. And uh, I want to thank you both for expressing your concerns and also for uh, recognizing the church's efforts in terms of uh, teaching and allowing society to grow. And I'm sure we can still do more. Thank you. from Zimbabwe. Holy Father. My name is Kelvin Takudzwatsuro from Zimbabwe. We young people are struggling with our identity. What does it really mean to be an African young Catholic? Today, identities have, have become contested, sexual, racial, ethnic, religious, and many others. Some of us are getting confused and are searching to know who they are, how God sees us, and how the church sees us. In many parishes, dioceses, and other church institutions, youths are not listened to. We also understand that not all families have failed in forming up their young people, but by the fact that the youth live in a highly disintegrated society, we are caught up in this tension and confusion over value priorities. Holy Father, we, the young people, wish to live fully the rich message of the gospel 
which you have fully, which you have clearly set forward in Evangelical Gaudium, which also live fully and celebrate the rich culture of Ubuntu spirit in our own lives. We, the young people, want to be involved in the leadership and decision-making processes of our parishes. But we are facing a difficult situation because, it is, because an aspect of our culture advocates that young people should not speak in the gathering of elders. Holy Father, please, will you encourage our bishops, our priests and religious to help, us, to help us create space for us young people to work with our elders so that we can contribute to the well-being of our parishes. Is it possible to create a pontifical council or commission to promote youth leadership and ministry in Africa? Since Africa is now the continent with the highest population of young Christians in the world. And we need some ecclesial structure to guide us. Gracias. Eh, Thank you. You asked some very serious questions regarding the identity of young people. In this day and age, identities are being questioned. We ask ourselves, what is identity? And therefore, young people ask themselves, who are we? Who are we, young Africans? What I would say to you is that you weren't born out of magic. You have a history, you have roots. And if young people don't care for the roots they received, their families, their countries, their history, then young people cannot become mature. Therefore, be aware of your roots so that you can lead them into the future. You have your own culture, your roots. You have your own personalities, your families. Those two are roots. And therefore, care for those roots without hiding in them, but to allow them to go into the future. You have to participate in the leadership in your countries. You have to accept uh, your role, but to do that, you have to continue. You have to continue growing uh, according to your own country's uh, cultural identity. Uh, in the uh, Exhortate Jubilate, the apostolic letter for young people, I refer to that concept. I refer to the fact that you have to find inspiration to move forward. But of course, young people shouldn't turn into revolutionary leaders. They have to uh, take stock of the cultural, political, and patriotic wealth they have so that they can move forward. They have to struggle in that direction together, not separately. And uh, you have to be united in looking towards the past, your roots, but also to the future with your ideals, with your organization. You have to be together, united, with a view to your history, your roots, but also with a view to the future, with the political promise of working together through your organizations. Young Christians have the duty to be engaged because otherwise they wouldn't be Christians. Jesus taught us to be committed, to be engaged. to reach uh, out to one another, to struggle for justice. And therefore, to be Christian in this day and age means to be committed, to be engaged, to struggle against all those structures that want to stop you from being committed. So keep your roots in mind and be brave and continue working forward. Uh, God bless you and please remember to pray for me. Thank you, Holy Father for listening to our students and the youth in Africa. I also thank you, I thank the students who have taken part in this discussion. At this point, 
I invite the 10 students representatives, those who took part in the discussions, Father Emmanuel and Sister Rosemary Nyurumbe to turn on their cameras. Holy Father, I would like to welcome Sister Rosemary Nyurumbe, a member of the Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus Moyo in Uganda, founded in South Sudan to give a vote of thanks. Your Holiness, on behalf of all the youth in Africa and in the world, I sincerely thank you for your spiritual guidance of our young people and your love for Africa and God's people throughout the world. You are teaching an exemplary life and your closeness to the poor, the vulnerable and young people continues to model for us how to live and proclaim the good news to the world today, especially those at the existential African young people are enthusiastic about your papacy and motivated through your words today to go the extra mile to build bridges with a firm and strong foundation for the future and the present time. Holy Father, thank you again for believing that the youth have a great responsibility which extends to caring for humanity and environment by reaching far to the peripheries to demonstrate solidarity while promoting the good of one and all. World. Through this synodal conversation, you are teaching all of us in the church to listen to the voices of young people and we promise to take this mission from here to God's people, especially those who feel forgotten and abandoned. I say to you in four African languages, Asante, Afoyomatek, Ekuse, Webale Nyo Chitafe, Papa Francesco. Thank you, Sister Rosemary. Holy Father, this assembly of God's people is now ready to hear your final exhortation and to receive your apostolic blessing as you send the thousands of African youth on a mission on this day designated in our continent as Africa's Youth Day. Your Holiness, welcome. I'm very glad to have had this meeting with you. I'm very happy. I was impressed by all of your remarks. Let me just uh, reiterate that uh, I believe you have values and please continue. Please continue to be engaged without ever forgetting that you have to Keep your roots in mind. You should remember your past. You weren't born under a tree. You were born with a history. So look to your roots, the roots of your family, your people, your culture. Secondly, live in the present with a firm grip on reality and try not to be alienated. Keep a firm view on the real present and don't stop dreaming because whenever young people stop dreaming that's when countries come to an end that's when countries stop that's when the world stops you were born to dream you were born to be prophets of the future and therefore i urge you to look to the past to look to your roots to your personal history keep in touch with your present struggle in the present consistently with a view to the future. Keep dreaming with a view to your roots. May God bless you. May God bless you all. 
and I'd like to ask all of you to pray for me. And may the Virgin Mary take care of you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. La jeunesse du Congo En route avec le pape Vers une église La jeunesse du monde La jeunesse africaine La jeunesse du Congo En route avec le pape Vers une église
dit le pape François, les jeunes doivent faire entendre leur voix dans l'église, malgré les obstacles qu'ils rencontrent. The voice of young people in Christus vivit, said Pope Francis. The young must make their voices heard in the church, despite the obstacles they face. avec les jeunes pour qu'ils ne perdent pas le chemin. L'Église demande aux jeunes de lui montrer les voies qu'elle est appelée à parcourir. Through the sinner, the church wants to work with young people so that they do not lose their way. The church is asking young people to show her the path to work in the world today. The path she is called to work with them. Alors, le rendez-vous, c'est pour le 1er novembre à la fête de la Toussaint et journée de la jeunesse africaine via une rencontre virtuelle au cours de laquelle le pape François sera à l'écoute des jeunes étudiants catholiques africains. So, The appointment is for November 1st at the Feast of All Saints and African Youth Day. Via a virtual meeting during which Pope Francis will listen to young African Catholic students 